darkness rises and the light to meet it. This is not going to go the way you think. Congratulations, everyone. You made it. This is Star Wars week. You finally get your new saga film. So this is going to be my non-spoilery review. So no worries, no spoilers for The Last Jedi. I will talk about it as much as I can without getting into super specifics. But the main takeaway is that this is the movie that you were waiting for when you heard that they were going to do a new Star Wars franchise when Disney bought out Lucasfilm. Make all the Obi-Wan memes you want to. This is the Star Wars movie that you're looking for. If you felt like Episode 7 was too much of a remake of Episode 4, this is the departure from that. It is the most different Star Wars movie, but at the same time, the most Star Wars movie that you've seen. It blows the mythology wide open. It will get you really excited for what Ryan Johnson's going to do with the new trilogy that they just announced with completely new characters. Because once you see what he does with the brand new characters, not the ones that you've seen from Episode 7, but the ones that he's just introduced and how well they work in the story, you just get really jazzed up for what he's going to be doing next inside the universe. But if you're just finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm also doing a ticket giveaway that I'll explain at the end of the video. There will be plot points, things about the mythology that they put forth that will be argued about for years to come, even after we get episode 9. The key to that is a lot of things that you've been seeing in the trailers with Luke Skywalker, with Snoke, with a lot of the backstory that they tease out during the movie. So it's totally fascinating. Obviously, a lot of that they'll deal with in the expanded material. The movie gives you as much information as you need to understand the big twists of the movie. But beyond that, you don't get this big rap sheet about everything that everybody's done their entire life. So everybody hoping to get all the answers about Snoke, about Ray's parents, about all the biggest questions... You get clues and information about that and enough to put the pieces together. Like the theory crafters will have so much fun with this movie, but it's not like they're going to tell you every exact little thing. Getting into the actor performances, I'd say Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver probably gave the best performances of the movie. You can argue about which you think is better after you see it. Mark Hamill was amazing as Methuselah Luke Skywalker. He's been telling that joke ever since they started talking about the movie. You may have heard his comments about how he completely disagreed with Ryan Johnson's take on the character when he first read the script. Like, how dare you do this to Luke Skywalker? This isn't what should be happening. He should be this other different way. Mark Hamill actually developed a non-canonical backstory for Luke Skywalker before we meet him during Episode 7. And of course, the movie throws that out the window, and it treats his story the same way it treats Snoke and the other characters do. It gives you all the information that you need for this movie, but it doesn't tell you every last little thing. I said the movie blows the mythology, the Jedi lore wide open. A lot of that has to do with Luke Skywalker's character, his arc. That's also why it's going to be one of the most argued about films in the fandom. Like people just arguing about the way things work, the mechanics of everything. In a good way though, not in a bad way. Arguing over small Star Wars details is one of the favorite pastimes of nerddom. So this will give you enough to go on until we find out what's going to happen with the next saga, with like episode 10, 11, 12. But obviously we still have episode 9, so there's still going to be a lot of new stuff that we'll get. But across the board, I feel like Brian Johnson did an amazing job directing the actors. All their performances, all the returning people did much better jobs. I love some of the pairings, like you have the Rose-Finn stuff in the movie. Finn was the comedic relief of Episode 7 that continues with Episode 8, and Rose provides this nice foil for his character. So you can think of them as like a buddy road trip comedy within this movie, even though things get really serious. They do provide some comedic relief, and that's also kind of what they use the Porgs for. It's sort of like the gremlins within the Star Wars movie. You may have seen some pictures from the trailers, them just being used in funny ways. Chewbacca just swatting them off of the dashboard of the Millennium Falcon. For those of you that are worried about the level of Porgs in the film, I feel like there was an appropriate level. Not too much, not too little. They're meant to lighten the tone just a little bit because we talk about the theme of Red in the movie, how this is the heaviest movie thematically in the franchise, just like Empire was during the original trilogy. The whole idea of the Resistance being the spark that's going to light the fire, that's going to burn down the First Order, is also present in the Rey character. There's a spark inside her, the awakening that we saw during Episode 7, but she has to choose what to do with that, so things go in a pretty dark direction compared to what you're used to in other Star Wars movies. So there is some appropriately used comedy to balance that out. So that's largely where the Finn character comes in, and along with the Porgs. 
So do not worry about Porgs. They're not a big plot point. It's not like they have some big third act reveal. They're not the Ewoks of the new trilogy. They're not that critical to the story. But speaking of critical to the story, Leia's character. Carrie Fisher has an amazing performance, as you would expect. I feel like she did a good job during episode seven. She has a lot more to do. And because things are so much darker in this film, obviously they do a great job of referencing Han Solo in their relationship. Their themes throughout the film, the music themes, the music cues that they bring back from the original films star wars rhymes like george lucas says but this is not a direct copy of empire the way that episode seven felt like a copy of episode four so don't worry about that but there are a lot of familiar things from the original trilogy from all three films as well as the prequels there are even some brief shout outs to big prequel mythology things so keep your ears peeled i don't want to say what they are to give away spoilers but we can talk about it later this week the only complaints that I had is that there are a couple of new characters, like I said, the three new ones are basically Admiral Holdo, DJ, Benicio Del Toro's character, and Rose Tico, and by the virtue of the fact that she's traveling with the Finn character, of those three characters, Rose gets the most screen time, so I kind of feel like they wasted Oscar Isaac just a little bit, even though they give him a lot more to do in this film, he still feels like he doesn't get that much screen time. And Laura Dern is amazing and is probably one of the most interesting new characters that the franchise has introduced. They also kind of waste her a little bit in the film too, even though she's a very important person. So even though it's a two and a half hour movie, Rey, Kylo Ren, Snoke, Luke Skywalker, the force users of the film, they get the most screen time. Obviously, that's not a big surprise. But at the same time, there are a couple really cool characters that you just don't see quite enough of. There's so many new theories that the movie is going to give birth to that I'm really excited to talk about, but we'll have to wait a couple days just to give people a chance to see the film, but it's going to be a lot more fun to talk about the franchise after this film than it was after The Force Awakens, that I think people soured on a little bit with time, like people were really excited for Star Wars to come back, but then you watch The Force Awakens a couple more times and you start to realize why people criticize it so much. And I feel like this film will still be well received by the time we get to episode nine. Like, oh, wow, this is what we want when we say we want some new Star Wars. Give us something that feels like Star Wars, but isn't an exact copy of what we've seen before. I can't really talk about the Jedi stuff, the big battles of the film without getting into super spoilers, but obviously the CG looks amazing. They have some crazy fights. There is some amazing Jedi stuff that they do in this. And like I said, blow the mythology wide open. You see force abilities that you have not seen before. So re-ranking my favorite Star Wars films from favorite to least favorite, and I included the holiday special on this just for fun, starting with the top, Empire, Last Jedi, New Hope, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, Revenge of the Sith, Attack of the Clones, Rogue One, then Phantom Menace. And then at the bottom, I'll say Holiday Special because it's fun to watch the Holiday Special because it's so bad. It's sort of a rite of passage for the fandom. So if you yourself have a younger brother or a younger sister that hasn't seen it, or if you're a parent and your child hasn't seen it yet, be sure to make them watch that before the end of the year so they can say they've done it at least once in their life. But all in all, I feel like this is going to be a great movie to revisit. I'll probably see it a couple more times in the theater before the end of the year. If you have the chance to see it in IMAX, obviously it's worth the extra money. You don't have to see it in 3D. That doesn't make it that much better. But if you really like 3D movies, then sure, go for it. But it is one of those movies that's fun to rewatch. And obviously there's so much to unpack, so much that they do with the characters that it takes a long time to process. You will want to see this multiple times. But I don't want to overstep and call it the greatest movie to ever be made. I mean, there are people that will probably say that after this comes out. People will say it's the best Star Wars movie ever. Putting it in context, Empire is still my favorite because at the time it was brand new. Like it was forging new ground and a lot of these later films are still derivative even though they're really amazing. Ryan Johnson made a really amazing Star Wars film, but it's still built on the bones of what came before. So Empire still gets that top slot. We'll see what ends up happening with Episode 9. It is going to be really hard for Episode 9 to be better than Episode 8. And suddenly you realize why Ryan Johnson didn't want to direct Episode 9 and instead go off to this new trilogy with completely different characters just so that he could go out on such a high watermark in the saga films. So obviously he's staying in the Star Wars universe, but he's not going to do another saga film for the foreseeable future. But there is a new round of that IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Star Wars related comment on the video. Congratulations to the winner from my last video, Jordan Vasquez. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. Without answering your question, I will say that the movie helps eliminate 
a lot of the bigger theories about the characters. So don't worry, it's going to get here in a couple days. My next Star Wars video will probably be on Thursday night, and that'll be about the ending of the film and some of the bigger twists. Then we'll start talking about more spoilery stuff over the weekend. So just leave all your requests for bonus videos in the comments. But you can click here for that last big trailer video and click here for that brand new Black Panther trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.